Hey everybody, Star Six Wars One here, and welcome back to the best of anime. But for this part of the project, I'm going to replace the word best with favorite and look at my top 14 favorite anime OSTs. Since music is highly subjective and other people's lists will differ greatly from my own, I didn't even bother with making a best list and called it a favorite list instead. That being said, I do have my own set of rules. One, I'm not including anime which may have one or two highlights in their soundtracks. In order for me to include an OST on this list, I have to like it as a whole, not just a highlight or two while not caring about the rest of the music. Two, I have to watch the anime in order for me to put it on here. Given previous parts of my best of anime, this was probably expected, but I feel it needs repeating. I will not be including soundtracks from anime I have not seen because I feel that would diminish the effect this list has. However, I will include anime that I am watching, but haven't yet finished. Third, this list is mostly in no particular order. Because I can't decide on an ordering, but my favorite OST will be featured at the end of the video. Finally, I'm not including anime that have their origins from video games because the few video game adaptations I've seen have the same OST from the game, which I feel would be cheating since this list is from my favorite anime soundtracks and not favorite soundtracks overall. Now, I've already stated in previous parts of the best of anime videos who my tags are, which will be the same for the remainder of the project, so I won't go over that again. So before I truly begin, I want to go into some honorable mentions that didn't quite make the cut. Firstly, Bacano. While I don't mind its soundtrack, personally for me, it only had Bacano no theme as a single standout track with the rest being unimpressive. The next honorable mention is Welcome to the NHK for pretty much the same reason as Bacano. While I do adore the track Hitori Bochi, that's all I really remember of the soundtrack. For my third honorable mention, we have Persona 3's OST. This one is hard for me to leave out, but because it's music originating from a video game, it's against the previously stated rules, so I reluctantly won't include it on the list. My final honorable mention is Clanad. When I began planning my best of anime series, this probably would have been included. However, since then, I've listened to more OSTs I prefer over Clan Ed's soundtrack. And while there are tons of pieces I like in Clan Ed's soundtrack, there are a lot I am not so fond of, so I decide to just give it an honorable mention. With all that said, let's begin. Let's kick off my favorite OSTs with a JoJo soundtrack. I had an easy time picking which of the three seasons soundtracks would be included. Since I don't remember Phantom Blood's music, and I feel that while Stardust Crusaders has an occasional few standout pieces, but as a whole, it doesn't hold much of a candle to Battle Tendencies music. I gotta give credit to where it's due. Taku Iwasaki did a fantastic job on the soundtrack. Hell, I'm not particularly fond of dubstep, and even he makes dubstep tracks sound awesome, which is an accomplishment in my book. My favorite tracks are The Cool Old Town, The Almost Annoyingly Catchy Awaken, The Memorable Propaganda, The Awe-Inspiring Fields of Fright, and my personal favorite being the breathtaking I Mary Erto Nele Maya Anima, and it's tear jerking remix of the same name. Also, if I apologize if I pronounced that wrong. I love Battle Tendencies OST, and it's a personal favorite of mine. I find that out of all the OSTs I have on this list, FLCL stands out because of the band called The Pellows composing the entire soundtrack, not just its ending theme, which is quite rare. It results in FLCL's music sticking out opposed to other anime soundtracks. Beyond it being eccentric, I just really dig the soundtrack. The use of the band, the warm and welcoming feeling of the music, I just love the entirety of FLCL's track list. Some highlight tracks for me are Little Busters, Ride on Shooting Star, Last Dinosaur, Brand New Love Song, and Carnival. It's a unique but astounding soundtrack, which is all I'm asking for. Kinda like JoJo, Kuriko has more than one composer, 
The first composer named Rinosuke Nakashimi only did the first season, while the second composer, Yoshihiro Aiki, did seasons 2 and 3. Out of the two composers, I'd say I prefer Yoshihiro's work on Kiriko because I feel his music for seasons 2 and 3 fit the anime much better than the first seasons, though it too had its moments. However, if you were to ask which season's soundtrack was better, I couldn't answer that as easily because I view both as equals that serve their purposes well, and to me, they work great. My favorite tracks in both soundtracks are Daiki Amine 1 and 2, Winter Cup, Shield of Igus, Toe Match Epilogue, and Kabayaku no Teu. Both seasons 2 and 3 of Kiriko have music full of excitement and energy that I love. When it comes to Kill a Kill's OST, I only have one word to use for it. GRAND. The songs amplify the over-the-top nature of the anime, which other anime of the action genre fail to accomplish. A lot of credit goes to Hiroyuki Sawano, who is known for composing extremely epic music. Personally, this is by far my favorite of his works. Part of that might be because his soundtrack for Kill a Kill fits perfectly. Kill a Kill has a wide array of tracks that fits the very epic scenes as well as the common sad moments, all of which are masterfully crafted. The tracks I adore include the downright awesome Blooming Crons, the very memorable Before My Body is Dry AK, Don't Lose Your Way, the hilarious but cool Suck Your Blood, the creepy but investing Nui Harame's theme, and the awe-inspiring Gorilla Jaru. However, the most impressive thing about it is that the music never overpowers the anime, which given the soundtrack being so dominating, is an incredible feat. I love Kill a Kill and its unforgettable soundtrack. While I'm really fond of Suzumu Hirasawa's work in a lot of Satoshi Kon's movies and Paranoia Agent, I gotta say my favorite OST in a Satoshi Kon movie is one where Hirasawa had no involvement which was Perfect Blue. Perfect Blue has amazing music composed by Ikumi Masahiro, whose only other work was an old anime made in the 80s that I've never heard of until researching him. It's impressive that such an unknown composer could make an awe-inspiring soundtrack. It can go from upbeat with Angel of Love to Mima's unsettling theme to the outright disturbing Virtua Mima and the very melancholic Cherish These Memories. Actually, the only song I dislike is Ten Season, which is used as the ending theme for Perfect Blue and is hilariously unfit to the ending of the film. But even then, it's an okay track that is utilized poorly. Overall, Perfect Blue has a great soundtrack to accompany a splendid movie. I have a bit of a bizarre history with Dorara's soundtrack, Originally, while watching the anime, I dismissed the OST as having a few highlights, but nothing special. Then, while writing my review for it, I listened to it again, and grew to not only like, but love the music. I was really impressed by Makoto Yoshimori, because usually his soundtracks have a highlight or two. Beyond that, they're nothing to drool over. Luckily, Dorara is the exception to that, with a variety of tracks like... E.K. Bukuro, West Exit, Five Way Intersection, Russian Bodyguard, The Sought After, Extraordinary, Their Aspirations, Green Memories, and He's Such a Coward That He Can Laugh. With these chaotic and eccentric pieces, I find myself itching to listen to them on repeat. Overall, this soundtrack is unique to say the least. To say the most, I fucking love it. If there is one thing about Berserk's OST that I'm very well aware of, is that it's very minimalist. There are very few tracks on the track list, unlike many other soundtracks showcased in this video. In total, Berserk only has 9 tracks in the entire soundtrack, not including the opening and ending themes. Now, I get that for a movie or OVA, but for a 25 episode series, that's quite surprising to see Berserk have so few tracks. However, despite that, Berserk manages to be a favorite of mine, not just because of the famous two pieces, which are absolutely fantastic, but I just love the entire list of tracks that add so much atmosphere to each scene. Suzumu Hirasawa did an incredible job with the music, 
with my favorite pieces being the highly recognizable and respected forces, the common yet tragic Gatsu, and the mysterious yet ominous Bayonet. The music just screams Berserk, which is exactly what it should do. It's a small yet masterful soundtrack fit for a phenomenally written anime. As much as I'm not the biggest fan of Death Note, there is one thing I can't deny. Its OST is killer. I gotta give credit to Yoshihisa Hirano because he really did a sweet job on this soundtrack. The memorable tracks all enhance the tone of each scene, like the amazing lights theme, to the mysterious L's theme, to the solemn solitude, to the divinely epic low of solophism, to the somber mellow no theme, and the foreboding Kaire. I will admit it does remix a lot of songs like L's theme multiple times, and a lot of the names lack in creativity, but it makes up for that in being how grand and wonderful it is. I may not have the most positive things to say when it comes to Death Note as a series, but its music will always be one of the show's standout components that kicks ass all on its own. Taku Iwasaki makes a return for Rurouni Kenshin Trust and Betrayal OST. Out of all of his soundtracks that he has composed, this is probably his most different and unique among them. I recognize his music for being bombastic and epic, with a subtle and sadder track sprinkled occasionally. However, this is a complete reversal of that. The tracks here have much more somber and lonely tone to them, unlike many of his other works. Even the few Bombaster tracks still have a hint of sadness to them that his other tracks rarely display. Tracks like In Memories, Kotowari, In Memories, A Boy Meets a Man, In the Rain, and Alone Again truly emphasizes how special this soundtrack is opposed to his other works. But that's what I love about it. It proves he isn't a one-trick pony that always composes music that are thunderous and in your face. He can be subtle and can create depressing music with Roroni Kenshin Trust and Betrayal being proof of that. Also, given Trust and Betrayal's tone, the music fits so well, and I love it for that. Overall, while sad, it's a wonderful soundtrack that's filled to the brim with emotion. It wasn't the easiest coming up with which of the Evangelion OSTs I would ultimately put here, because of all of them, including the rebuilds, are great. It came down to either the original series or End of Eva's soundtracks. Both are really great in many ways and have big standouts, however, I prefer End of Eva's soundtrack simply because while the original has an awesome soundtrack, I just think End of Eva's is masterful in execution. Shiro Sagiyusu truly outdid himself with the music of End of Eva. It can sound epic, tragic, foreboding, urgent, and just awe-inspiring when it needs to. My favorite tracks include Tanen no Kansho, Migawari, MP Shinyu, Hajimari e no Taru, Hyuan Tu no Mitsugetsu, Jesus Spellet, Mayan Verdu, and Com Scissor Todd. Hell, Com Scissor Todd in general is one of my favorite pieces, period. It is so many things that I could never even hope to explain it all here. Beyond that, though, this is an amazing soundtrack and easily my favorite of Shiro Sakiyusu's work. While there are many who would argue which FMA adaptation was best, most agree FMA 03 had the better OST. I think FMA 03's OST has a nice balance of music like the calming harmony, the very joyful heavenly spirit, the hilarious pint-sized alchemist, the dark and sinister philosopher's stone, the unnerving and mysterious Dante, the simple yet sad Kokai, and how could I forget the amazing brothers. Brothers alone makes the soundtrack something special. It's a song of sorrow, determination, regret, longing, and emphasizing how the brothers Ed and Al seek forgiveness from their past sins. But even beyond that, the soundtrack is absolutely remarkable, which is why it deserves a spot on this list. For every scene, the track that plays captures the mood perfectly with an assortment of arrangements like Brothers that emit such beautiful and powerful emotion unlike any soundtrack I've heard. It's an outstanding soundtrack and will forever hold a special place in my heart. Out of all of Yoko Kano's anime soundtracks, i definitely say my favorite of hers is Cowboy Bebop's. Not to diminish the quality of her other works, I just tend to return to Cowboy Bebop's OST over others like Zanki no Terror and Wolf's Rain. My favorite tracks are Rain, Greenbird, Rush, 
Too Good, Too Bad, Call Me, Call Me, See You, Space Cowboy, Bonus T, and Blue. I don't have some grand, elaborate reasons to why I love this soundtrack over the other Yoko Kano ones, but I just do. It stimulates my brain in all the right ways, I think the music sounds delightful, and I enjoy listening to the tracks anytime, anywhere. I can't not include Trigun's OST on my favorites list. I love this soundtrack so deeply from the bottom of my heart. Despite the composer Suneo Imahori not producing many soundtracks on his own, he was a guitarist for a Bebop and Wolf's Rain soundtrack. However, he truly impressed me with Trigun's soundtrack. I just love the wide variety of tracks that play here. We got tracks like the Happy Go Lucky and Hopeful Fool's Paradise, the Badass Big Bluff, the ominous and foreboding Perfect Night, the simple yet sad Suna no Hoshi, the outright depressing Rakian, and the amazingly tragic Scattered Rain. I believe the music is magnificent and fit the show. This is a fantastic soundtrack and worth listening to if you have the time. We started this list with a Taku Iwasaki soundtrack, so I find it fitting to end with another of his soundtracks. What would be a Star Six Wars 1 favorite OST list without the great, the powerful, the awe-inspiring Gurren Nagat? Who the hell do you think I am? If I was to use one word to describe the soundtrack here, I think I'd use the same word as Kill a Kill's soundtrack. Grand. There is an epicness to the music of Gurren Lagann that is unrivaled in my eyes. But beyond being epic, the soundtrack can be surprisingly quiet and subtle when it needs to be, which may shock some given Gurren Lagann's reputation for being bombastic and over the top. Some of my favorite tracks are Nikopol, No Way, With Your Drill, Pierce the Heavens, Fleeing the Hot Desert, Team Die Gurren Can Continue, I'll Decide With Glasses, How's that? My trumpet is awesome, right? Rap wa kanotashi data yona. Adai village is dekioske. Love conservative with your... And who can forget? Libere me from hell. An epically powerful track that combines rap with some variation of opera to generate a truly unique piece that encompasses what Gurren Lagann is all about. Even without the tracks mentioned, it's a great soundtrack with many favorite tracks everyone can listen to. It is my favorite OST that has graced my ears in the anime medium and is well deserving of that title. All I can really say is I love Gurren Lagann's soundtrack. Thank you Taku Iwasaki for creating this masterful soundtrack. Anyways, that's all from me. This has been Star Six Wars 1 and I'll see you next time for the finale of the best of anime.